Hello and welcome to band pricing. Today we're going to price a bond. Uh, this is, I made it for my advanced corporate finance or my MBA 610 class, either one, uh, but it's for anyone. So what we can do is go to the financeprofessor.com 401 page and I am going to download this spreadsheet, which I cheated and already did. And here is our spreadsheet. Now to price a bond, and a bond is just a IOU that the company owes to the investor, the, the, the main three things is different ways of doing it. People get confused. What we want to do is to draw a timeline. We're going to discount each one back and then we're going to add the discounted cash flows. This is the first way to do it. This is what I would call a brute force way. So the coupon payments, so just background, it's a five year bond. The bond pays annual coupon payments, which is unusual in the United States, uh, less so in Europe. Usually in the United States we pay semi-annual, but for simplicity I'm keeping it annual payments now. And market, the market is requiring a return of 7% as well. So we draw the timeline, and I highly recommend this, even though it seems simplistic and maybe not needed. I think this is the hardest part of any present value or any valuation problem. So we draw it out, years, one, two, three, four, five, coupon payments. It's a 7% bond, and we're just going to say it's a $1,000 par. You can scale that up or down if you want to. The principal amount is 1000 so we add these two together, we get total cash flows of 70 per year and 1,070 in year five. So as I said, we can brute force it, take the present value equals the cash flow divided by one plus the required return. The required return is an I-17. And we raise that to the year that it cash flow occurs in, so one. And what I am going to do is lock this make it an absolute so I-17 stays the same when I can copy that across, copy that across, add it together, and you will see that the price of the bond equals $1,000. Now that's no coincidence when the coupon payment and the interest rate are both the same, they will always be at a par, selling at par. So it's a nice, easy way to remember it. Now there are other ways of doing this as well. A second way is to take, to look at these cash flows and say, hey, we have 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, that's an annuity. We could find the present value of the annuity. We could find the present value of this lump sum of 1,000 here and bring them back together. So to do that, um, again, I'm, I'm doing it the old fashioned way, the way the book would do it. Uh, the present value is one divided, by, oh, sorry, the present value annuity factor is here, 1 divided by r minus 1 divided by 1 plus r raised to the n. Uh, I already cheated and did the math here. It turns out at 7%, uh, that turns out 7% 5 years, that turns out to be 4.1. So what we can do is take 70, the cash flow, times 4.1, and we get $287. So that is how much the interest payments are worth over the 5 years. We also have the principal amount of the bond, so that's equal to 1,000 here. And we're going to divide that by 1 plus, and if you remember, it was I-17, but we'll go up and get it just so we can change it later. You never want to hardwire anything. And we're going to raise that to the fifth power, because it is in year five that the cash flow is going to occur. And we find out that the principal is worth $712. If we add those two together, equals this present value of the annuity plus present value of the lump sum, and voila, we also have $1,000. So, so far, so good. Now you may say, can I do it a faster way? And of course, in Excel, you can. Uh, a good way to do it, which we'll use later on for lots of different things, is net present value. It's also very easy. Once you have your total cash flows, you take the formula equals net present value, the interest rate and the range, or the required return and the range. So equals net present value. And let's go up to I-17 again. Get that. And the range, which is 70, 70, 70, and 10, 70. Close that parenthesis. And bingo, $1,000 again. So what we've just seen is three different ways to price a bond. We can brute force it bring each cash flow back individually at the required rate of return. We can take the present value of the annuity plus the present value of the lump sum, add them together, 
get the thousand dollars or get the price of the bond, which happens in this case to be a thousand dollars, or we can take the net present value of the cash flows and get a thousand dollars. Any which way you do it is fine as long as you do it. And that is what we have for pricing a bond.